Thank you so much for staying tuned. Of course, we're going to be headed right now to our guest where we have Dr. Udwar Akban, who is an accomplished and versatile development economist, um, joining us to look at certain um, economic issues on the continent. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us, Dr. Akban. Oh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for having me today. Thank you so much. So we're still talking economy and Africa this afternoon. And, well, Nigeria seems to be um, the bedrock of our conversation. We've been celebrating some highs where inflation is concerned. We just, um, a few days ago, we recorded that inflation went down by 32.15%. Um, the highest it has actually dropped, you know, twice consecutively in the last two years. What are some of the indices that you think is contributing um, to the inflation drop, especially as we have recorded that the, the case with inflation is actually a global one? Oh, okay. Thank you very much for this question. Just um, perhaps um, some clarification. So um, the data that we have released by the National Bureau of Statistics mm -hmm shows that the inflation dropped from 33.4% mm -hmm. to 32.15%, which essentially means a drop of um, 1.25 percentage points. Um, it's a drop, so it's a good thing. It's, it's, it's a positive development. Um, but at 32.15%, it's still very high. Mm -hmm. um, and the implications of having high inflation, it's, um, there's, there are so many implications to cuts across every part of the society. It has microeconomic implications and macroeconomic implications. Um, is it something that we should celebrate? Well, it's something that it's a bit exciting, but at a 2.15% of inflation is still very high. Mm. And um, we can see how this is impacting on um, the cost of food, the cost of living, cost of transportation, and then in, in cost of virtually everything in the, in, in the society. So one of the key indices that is being used to, to um, gauge this is the um, consumer price index, which is majorly what you know, everyone is concerned with, the end users of all of you know, um, the inflation points. Now, it, it actually reduced um, at about 1.25 percentage point. What would you, you know, now what are some of the contributing factors that we are seeing that consumer index is, you know, dropping? Are we seeing an increase in manufacturing or a reduction in consumer um, product, in the consumption of consumer products, actually? Well, it's, it's good to first of all understand that um, the recently released figure is for August 2024. Consumer price index essentially shows a basket of everyday commodities. Um, in that index, the price of some things may be much higher than 32.15, um, while the price of some other commodities may, may um, reduce a bit. In fact, it's not that it's reducing, it's that it is not increasing as much as others. So it's not that there is actual reduction. Um, so that is, that is the, 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 the implication, of course. The, the cost of um, the, the end prices of different food items would naturally increase. Um, but because the demand of some other commodities must, must have reduced based on um, law of demand, um, that, would, that would make the prices of some of those commodities not to increase as much as others. So that's essentially the implication of um, the inflation figures released. So still talking about consumer products again, uh, what are some of the modalities that we can, you know, use to show up that the inflation further drops? Because, I mean, we are seeing that as a result of several things, including flooding, for instance, that is going on now in Nigeria and several other parts of the world, um, food, farm is being washed away, farming, farming products rather are being washed away. So we are going to see that it's going to further put, an, you know, a, um, much more pressure on the commodities that should be available. In what ways do you think that we can shore up the consumer index to make sure that um, inflation doesn't further increase? Like you rightly said, it's not like it has gone down that much. It's not just, you know, growing as it were. Okay, so, you know, um, Everybody has a basket of everyday, everyday demand, everyday needs. 
And in that basket, if it's aggregated across the society, across the local government, across the states, it becomes essentially the basket of commodity in need or in demand. Um, with the increase in inflation, people's uh, disposable income become more stretched. Um, that means people would start prioritizing what is most important and what is not that important. So, for example, people may stop prioritizing buying of um, luxury items. People may stop buying electronics and so on and so forth. So that means the inflation um, on electronics, because of the reduced demand, the inflation on electronics would be a bit lower. Because people are now prioritizing food, the inflation on food would be higher. So this index is more like um, a weighted average of the inflation across the consumer baskets. Um, in terms of in terms of food, what can be done? I think it's about increasing production of food, and there is no other there is no other um, alternative to to increasing production of food to in, investing in large scale agriculture. Um, so as to reduce the unit cost of production and essentially the cost of production of food. That's the only solution. Okay. So l let me take you away just a bit from inflation-related conversations, but still around trade. Um, we've seen that um, Dr. Ngozi okonjo Iwela, who is the Director General for the World Trade Organization, has you know, begun to introduce conversations for a return for a second term of another four years um, at the helms of affairs of the WTO. So far, so good. If we look into um, some of the projects that she has initiated, which is asking for an opportunity to come back and finished, finish on finished business, uh, would you say that it's been so good to have an African woman sitting in that capacity? And, you know, what are some of the um, indices that we can, you know, um, celebrate in her term of four, four years, which will be ending August of 2025? Well, I think, um, first of all, it's a very, it's a very um, good thing to note that it's an African woman, a Nigerian person, that it's having a global organization. Um, but essentially, it's a personal achievement and has very little implications on what happens within the, 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 the economies of um, African countries or developing countries. Um, global institutions are very structured. It's difficult to really make change. And um, the, 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 the WTO rules, the trading rules um, have been set. She can't change any of that. Hmm. Um, so essentially, she's just an administrator. Um, that notwithstanding, I think it's 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 a good thing for Africans because it means Africans can also aspire um, to head different global institutions, and Africans can have very impressive profiles that can open doors for them. So, from that perspective, it's a very good thing. But in terms of its impact on the economy of any country, I doubt whether that has any impact. Okay, so looking at impact, what some of the things that you know, um, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwela has tried to do in this first term is actually to felicitate um, trade, especially um, on, on the global scenario and making Africa to actually have a better advantage point. We know that she has pushed several projects and conversations, especially, which should help Africa um, navigate the world trade space very effectively. How well would you say, in your words, as an administrator, that she has done in that capacity? Well, the thing is, every, every institution advocates for improved trade. Um, but that's just on a very theoretical perspective. Mm. Trade is done between firms and among firms in countries. It's firms that would need to demand commodities from a particular country. And so while countries can sign bilateral trade agreements, free trade agreements to improve um, the, the, the trade between or amongst themselves, the fact is if your country is uh, it's a net importer, most of those free trade agreements would have very little implication on, on um, the, the, the productivity or the competitiveness of your firms. Mm. Rather, firms from foreign firms would, would um, export things to your country and by so doing, you'd be employing people or your country would be subsidizing or employing people in other countries. So why free trade has only really worked for most African countries is that African countries are not um, exporting. They're only exporting commodities, primary commodities. 
so um in other countries that are exporting um uh, value added commodities finished product advanced um complex commodities the free trade works for them because they can earn foreign currencies and they can employ they can innovate they can compete with other countries so that's how it works Okay, so talk, talking about how to show up production in Africa, we've been, I think the last time we had a conversation with you, we're talking about several factors that are mitigating development on the continent. The gross one being the leadership structure available. But we continue to see in terms of trade that African leaders lean a lot on taking loans from organizations such as the IMF and the World Bank. Now, if we are to grow in terms of production, um, what steps would you rather that we took? Now, if we are not borrowing from these, you know, um, foreign banking facilities, how can we show our production to make sure that we are even leveraging for world trade as it were? Well, the thing is, um, we have to learn from what happens in other places. Um, that includes Western Europe, that includes um, North America, that includes South America. I include smaller countries like Thailand, like Vietnam, like Bangladesh. How are they improving? The thing is, um, improvement comes from learning. It comes from imitation. It comes from um, attracting investments. And when you have a foreign, co a foreign um, um, investor come to invest in, let's say, the production of clothing and apparel, what likely happens is that there are some domestic firms that will be linked, either in terms of supplying some, some, um, some of the inputs, mm -hmm. And through that, the supplies of those most thick firms will be standardized. And then they would improve in the quality of their supplies. And through continuous learning, and when, when we say learning, it's, it's, um, there, is, there is conceptual learning, there is procedural learning. So it's not just about learning concepts, having um, um, PhDs in, in engineering. It's about learning procedures, how to get things done. So countries invest in all these dimensions of learning so that their domestic firm can have better absorptive capacity of technologies, of how to do things. And that is how every other contract is growing, and that is what they are doing. So because my, my question was going to be, don't you think we have enough seminars and conferences across board and across sectors? Um, just last week alone, we had about two or three AI conferences held in Nigeria alone. Don't you think we are having these talk rooms that should be exposing Africa, you know, um, towards better development? Well, the thing is, um, so going back to learning and we can, we can relate with this, everything that happens around us. So we see, um, let's say, foreign firms um, carry, let's say, oil companies. People would always accuse oil companies that they bring people from their countries who have only um, secondary education. And whereas you have those with master's degree in engineering that um, are not being employed. And the reason is, those people with secondary education in those countries know how to get things done. Whereas those of us who are Nigerians, we've taught conceptual learning. So what, what you have is conceptual learning. We know concepts. And we don't really know how to get things done. So um, I think it's time we move away from many talk shops and workshops to do shops. Um, we need to have places that people learn how to do things. We need to um, revitalize technical schools and strengthen technical schools because people would need to learn how to do things. The plumbers will need to learn how to plumb well. The um, carpenters would graduate from carpentry to wood design and industrial designs of woodwork. Mm, and that's okay. how everyone happens to learn. Okay, very, very important. Quickly, I know that Dr. Wisdom Enang is also on the line this afternoon. We quickly might just be able to solve in one question. Good afternoon, Dr. Wisdom Enang. Good to have you on the show. Good afternoon, Dr. Wisdom. Can you hear us? Okay, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, so let's um, take your attention to Nigeria very quickly. The issue of petrol price hike is a concern. We were about celebrating Dangote Refinery, but it looks like they are in a twin dance with the NNPCL that we cannot understand. Um, with regards to the current um, speculations and the draft that was sent out by the NNPCL yesterday, we should be seeing price of commodity um, from the Dangote refinery at about 950 naira per litre. Um, 
this is not what Nigerians were expecting, especially talking about refining the commodity in the country. What What's going on in that sector? All right, thank you very much. I think uh, the first thing that I should tell Nigerians is that um, the appurtenances for pricing is very much dependent on things like the price of the feedstock is transacted in dollars or those settled in Naira. We also know that um, we do have the uh, cost of production of itself and then the exchange rate. Now, uh, what we are seeing at the moment is a price that reflects the, uh, you know, the exchange rate that we have at the moment and the cost of the crude which Dangote had imported. Importation means the baseline cost, international cost of crude, plus the cost of shipment, plus the cost of insurance. Now, that's the uh, reflection. But what that also means is that if that is true, um, at this moment, from the calculations of the NMPCL, it means that there's, still no, there's no subsidy at the moment. Uh, so 950 is kind of a, a, a cost-reflective price with no subsidies. What it also means is that when we have the crude for Naira deal that is uh, expected to come in uh, from October 1, then we should get a lower price review in uh, petroleum products. But except there is some other things that they've considered that they haven't made public. But bearing all possibilities of any last minute uh, you know, factors coming in to create further undulations, uh, it's safe to say that the exchange rates and the uh, cost of crude and all the shipment costs for the crude is one of the, you know, accounts for about 70% of the pricing of the product. So uh, when the crude for Naira comes in, it will cut us off from the, uh, you know, the aspect of importing and, and paying for the shipment and the insurance fees. It will also make sure that the Dangote refineries are getting the right, uh, you know, getting the crude at the, uh, at a narrow rate, and that should help us. However, that is contingent on having uh, the NMPCL uh, fulfilling their part of the bargain. And also, that is also contingent on the exchange rate getting better. But I can believe it will get better because right now is the end of summer and coming to the back, of, back to school season. So it's typical to expect for that the, uh, the, um, you know, FX markets on the lessons will be quite high at this point. But I think as we settle into October and November, I expect that we will begin to have a better exchange rate. So, so, so you would say that exchange rate is what is maximally um, pressuring the price of the commodity as we speak? Pardon? So you're saying that the price of FX is what is pressuring um, the price of petrol in, in the country? Yeah, if you look at it, for example, the breakdown of the NMPCL tells us that they were, you know, they, they, it was paid in in uh, dollars because of the, of, of course, the crude was sourced in dollars. And if you just do uh, that dollar amount times a 1,000 hour exchange rate, times a 1,003 exchange rate, times a 1,006 exchange rate, you will find out that um, the, the exchange rates plays a huge factor, almost causing a 20% to 25% change in the prices, depending on the exchange rate. You see, it could, it could well uh, contribute as much as 20 to 25% of the actual cost of the, uh, of, of the um, uh, product. Okay. Like you said, we are, we are gearing off the summer um, holiday season generally. Um, we do hope that the trade of oil, as it were, on the global space and all of the politics that we know that is going on in the oil sector um, will be handled so that Nigeria and Nigerians can move forward. But that's pitiable the much we can actually talk about on Spotlight Africa this afternoon. I want to say thank you to um, Dr. Wisdom Renang for swinging by this afternoon. We absolutely appreciate you for your time. And also, Dr. Udra Akpan, thank you so much for your time on Spotlight Africa this afternoon. Okay, um, that's the much we can talk about. We keep pushing the conversation on how to develop the continent. My name is Uyai Mm, and this has been Spotlight Africa. Thank you for being a part of it. Do enjoy the rest of your day.